What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back out again with another video. So we're gonna check out WWE wrestlers who murdered a promo and not in a good way. Essentially, they went out there and stunk up the bed. <laughs> so this should be a, a a pretty interesting one, man. It, it happens. It happens. Not every time someone goes out there and they give this great performance on the microphone. Sometimes they stink to bed. Sometimes they mess up. And it's quite noticeable. But, I mean, it's live television. So, sometimes things like that happen. But you just got to be able to, hey, I messed up. Go back out there next week or whenever and try again. So, should be a good one. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get into it, man absolutely murdered a promo number 10 jack swagger's babyface promo when wwe jack swagger just just promo in general was a no for jack swagger like his aura was negative nine thousand. don't take it personally jack swagger if you ever see this it's just <clears throat> it, it just wasn't there the personality just was not there man implemented the modern day brand split one wrestler who looked like he could potentially have a career resurgence was jack swagger smackdown had a limited roster and with swagger being a former world champion there was some sound logic in giving swagger a push up the card unfortunately this planned push completely fell apart when swagger cut arguably the worst promo in smackdown history the babyface version of Swagger would cut a promo in street clothes and a backwards cap, and the promo was evidently designed to be cool and hip, but it ultimately made the former world champion look insanely stupid. Swagger would state lines such as, I have one stone cold fox of a wife. Woo! Good lord, that was cringe. The crowd had zero reaction and didn't remotely care, and you could visibly see the confidence leave him as soon as the crowd gave him the silent treatment. Number nine, Shotzi's demented. Pro Whoever wrote that for him, you need to be fired too. You need to be let go. That was awful. I just be trying to figure out when people be writing these scripts, do they really think people are going to be like, ooh, or laugh? I, I just be trying to figure it out. Promo. On the final SmackDown before this Survivor Series was... War Games in 2023, Shotzi uh. cut a promo on the show that was totally unhinged and completely baffled the crowd. Shotzi explained the motivations for targeting damage control, and while these motivations were grounded and logical, yes. Shotzi's delivery was far from it. Yeah. She was delivering the promo like she was a spooky supernatural character <laughs> that failed to connect with the oh audience God. at all. What was supposed to be a serious and legitimate promo turned comedic incredibly quickly, and even a war game's teammates in the ring looked like they were about to break character and burst out laughing. Number eight, Ronda yeah. Rousey doesn't know the WWE schedule. Ronda Rousey. Yeah, Ronda. She had the aura of who she was. Of you know, it's Ronda fucking Rousey. She can legitimately snap everybody's arm. Damn, they're on the roster. So she had that going for her. It's just her talking was just. Yeah, yeah. It just did. It doesn't work in the WWE format, in my opinion. I think she did better with the the backstage sit downs a little bit better because I'm sure that's something she was used to. But the live promos, new, 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 new. His first WWE run received rave reviews. However, when it came to her second WWE no. run, nothing seemed to click. Rousey's work was lackluster at best, and the majority of her promo work failed to generate a significant reaction from the crowd. This was the case on SmackDown in late 2022, as Rousey would be yeah. interrupted by a returning Charlotte Flair. Rousey would cut a promo where she said that Flair wanted to challenge for the title at SummerSlam, only for her to quickly realize that the next major event was actually the Royal Rumble. Rousey then completely butchered her recovery, which made the situation and promo delivery even worse. Number 7. Oof. Gangrel Speaks even though Gangrel was one of the more interesting characters of the Attitude Era, a lot of fans claim that the character's aura completely disintegrated at the moment <laughs> he cut his first promo. The reason to have Gangrel speak never made any sense, as nobody was crying out to hear his voice, and it added to his mystique that he never spoke a word. Gangrel was clearly nervous when delivering the dreaded promo in April of 1999, and he stumbled in his words a number of times during Aww, it. Man. It didn't help that Gangrel sounded like the least intimidating vampire alive, which <laughs> hinted the character. It wasn't a coincidence that Gangrel's WWE push then began to fizzle out after this infamous Damn. promo. The promo was no doubt a test from Vince McMahon to see how he would perform on the mic. And due to it being a colossal failure, McMahon likely yep. lost interest in the once captivating character. Number six. That's pretty much how it is. 
he'll give you a chance. If you bomb it or butcher it, it's a good chance you may not get that chance again or for a very, very long time. You may move, move down the card. That's just, just how it was, man. To me, they copy Charlotte's dialogue. Not every wrestler in WWE has been given the opportunity to cut an extended promo. Awful, However, awful, when a wrestler awful. is given the opportunity, it's important that they do a great job, as this will usually lead to WWE giving them more time on television as they've proven they can handle one of the more difficult aspects of pro wrestling. In 2017, the women from the first ever Cringe. All Women's Money in the Bank match were exchanging words in the ring on SmackDown, and Tamina delivered one of the most awkward Cringe. yet hilarious blunders <laughs> of the past decade. All of the women were sharing their grievances surrounding the controversial finish to the Money in the Bank match, and during the promo, Charlotte Flair would inform Natalia that if she doesn't shut up, she will make her look like Ellsworth. But then it was time for Tamina to deliver a line. She said the same thing. Never seen before in WWE, she repeated Flair's exact line. The crowd were lost for words, and the talent in the ring clearly had similar feelings. It's never been explained what happened here. Did she forget her lines, or did Flair accidentally steal Tamina's line? We may never know. We Number don't five, know, man. Roman Reigns' infamous promo. Roman Reigns' babyface work was always criticized. It's so crazy, man. So crazy how far we've come. Roman Reigns is back. The OTC, the original tribal chief, is back. And his aura is over 9,000. Right here? No. It was... It was it, they had some makings of some good stuff with him but for the most part the fans were rejecting him now the fans love him it's just it's just a beautiful thing to see how far he has come as a wrestler as an entertainer as you know someone that the fans want to see it's it's beautiful actually it's poetic size for being corny love and it. unintentionally comedic Reigns' babyface work, especially when it came to his promo work, was often scripted insanely poorly. Oh. And this was a huge detriment to Reigns. As we've all seen since his heel turn, that Reigns is an incredibly gifted talker. Yes. Reigns' most infamous promo came back in 2015 yeah. when Reigns used the phrase, I'm suffering succotash, son. The line was abysmal, as nobody even knew what it meant, and it was clearly not coming from Reigns' own mind. Yeah, Reigns knew that the promo and the specific line was dreadful, and Reigns was given an opportunity to reflect on the infamous promo during uh -huh. an interview on Logan Paul's podcast. I mean, I've had just some crappy promos that, you know, you get in early, you don't have any equity. I want to say something right uh -huh. now. I ain't saying it. You know what I mean? But 10 years ago, Vince is like, you're saying this, and it's highlighted, and then you're going to say it. And I said some crazy stuff, which still follows. Like the suffering sucker tash. I don't even remember. I just remember suffering sucker tash. And it was like literally eight years ago. And it would still be brought up. I mean, I've delivered some really good work over the past yes, few you years. Have. And they'll still be like suffering sucker tash. It's just one of those deals. Number four. Yeah, there was nothing he can do. So it, it just sucks because, like he said, you have to build your equity up, equity up in the company. Even though they're pushing you, you kind of have to follow whatever Vince has for you to say and do. You have to follow it because they're essentially pushing you up the card. If you don't, there's a good chance they will start de-pushing you. And he didn't want that, obviously. You know, so he kind of had to bite the bullet for as long as he did until he finally said, Hey, bro, I need to do this. I need a character change. Let's do this or I'm not coming back. Like, Let's do this this way. Let's give it a shot. And it worked. Vince signed off on it. And it worked. So. The Miz's Raw debut. Yep. It's a common consensus that The Miz is one of the best talkers in WWE. Not when he first came Both into as the a heel WWE. and as a baby face, The Miz can truly captivate the audience with a microphone. But for the former WWE champion, it hasn't always been this way. During his Raw debut, it was a future WWE champion's job to promote the Diva Search. The Miz wasn't ready for the spotlight as the pressure got to him, and he completely forgot his lines. Yeah. It was painful to watch, oh. and it's crazy to think that this is the same man that would yeah. go toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Cena on the microphone. Speaking to Alexa Bliss on her uncool podcast, Miz would dissect his Raw debut promo, and this is what the WWE veteran had to say. When that happens, you get this kind of knot in your stomach. You get a panic, and you uh -huh. get a cold sweat going, and I never felt that before in my life. And when that happened, I was like, oh my god, this is what happened, and I froze. Everything just went white, and I was like, oh my god, and thank god that producers played someone's music, because I was like, I'm gone, I have nowhere else to go. I couldn't do anything, and it was the most embarrassing oh, thing, and I'll man. never forget it. Number three, John Cena's quintessential. And, of course, you know, it, you know those type of things, 
can help you. It can mold you to have that confidence going in. And like he said, Miz is one of the best talkers in the company. He can he can sell a fight with just his words. So he's come a long way. And it's, that's just a testament to, all right, I messed up. I bombed horribly, but I recovered in the end. Your PG promo. During the PG era, John Ooh. Cena cut numerous promos that highlighted why his character was failing to connect with the older demographic. His promos were often kid-friendly and had yeah. ridiculous references in them, which were designed to make kids laugh. Well, the worst of these took place on Raw in yeah. 2010, when Cena cut a promo directed at Sheamus. Cena would scream out baloney, fudge, and mustard, and even reference World of Warcraft. They were, to Cena's credit, a few laughs from the audience, yet these were clearly from the kids in the audience. Yeah. It was unfortunately the type of promo that makes older wrestling fans ashamed of watching WWE. <laughs> Number two, Brock Lesnar laughs at Ricochet's promo. The 20th January 2020 edition of Raw featured Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman promoting the fact that Lesnar, as WWE Champion, was set to enter the annual Royal Rumble match. Their promo segment went completely off the rails when they were interrupted by Ricochet. Ricochet has never been known as a solid promo guy, uh, so when he attempted to come across as intimidating and legit, it unfortunately came across as incredibly comedic and the crowd just couldn't care less. Yeah. The promo was so bad that Lesnar was audibly laughing at it. <laughs> this definitely wasn't the intention behind Ricochet's interruption. As a whole, the segment did more damage oh, than Ricochet. good. And number one, The Undertaker's worst promo ever. Uh -oh. The Undertaker's character was in its weirdest place ever in the summer of 1999. Following the disbanding of the Ministry of Darkness, the dead man found himself in an alliance with the Big Show. The Undertaker was slowly reducing the number of supernatural elements within his character, and it's hard to say what this incarnation of this iconic character was supposed to even represent. During one of the promos on Raw, in a rare move, The Undertaker completely lost the crowd. The Undertaker's promo was nonsensical, and it even left Cherry Lola on commentary wondering what on earth he was even rambling about. The dead man <laughs> stated that he and The Big Show took a ride into the desert, and The Undertaker revealed that there was concern that The Big Show wouldn't be able to handle the physical task at hand due to the heat. The Undertaker would then reveal that he only wanted Big Show to have enough gas in his bike to get to the desert, and he was going to have to scramble to survive. It was some of the worst huh? work of The Undertaker's career, as it was just him ranting about conditions in the desert. This was, of course, the infamous promo segment, which was interrupted by Chris Jericho. Jericho would notoriously mm -hmm. bury The Undertaker in his promo, and due to the dead man not being aware of Jericho's promo material, it landed Jericho's significant backstage heat. Mm. There you have it, folks. 10 WWE wrestlers. Hey, man. Even the greats. Even the greats have their slip-ups. It's, it's part of it. It's part of the business. It's part of learning. It's part of being better at your craft you're going to fall you're going to fall so at times all you got to do is just find a way to pick yourself back up i mean even the undertaker has had some bad promos he's had some bad matches it happens you just got to be able to overcome those situations so comment down below let me know the worst promo you've ever heard from any wrestler from any company let me know down below and if there's a clip of it Send me the link. I want to check it out so I can laugh. Appreciate all the love support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 50k. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you on the next one. Peace.